Hey, welcome back everyone. So in today's video, I want to showcase some new brushes that I made for you. And uh, there's a link in the description box below if you want to check them out. So what I want to do is first uh, demonstrate them on this uh, circle, just so you can see what I did here. I created a circle and I set a clipping mask above it so everything will stay confined in there. And I'm going to work off this layer. So at first, what led me to make these is I wanted more uh, stippling effects that I like to use for backgrounds and things like that. These can be good for uh, space and, and all sorts of neat things. Keep in mind too that you can dab those and get a little bit more, uh, you know, spread out version uh, and also play around with the variation in brush size. Obviously going back and forth from dark to light as well can be a good thing to do. Uh, I like to combine something that's a little bit more dense like this with the next one that I made, which is a little bit lighter. Uh, so I do this a lot for background, just to kind of add some grit and uh, texture, stuff like that. So again, make sure that you play around with the variations of the size, kind of dabbing it, and then go from uh, positive and negative, and you can usually get some pretty cool texture effects like that. Um, you can also incorporate some of the uh, cross-hatching brushes with something like this. So I'll get into those in a second here, but I just want to show you that sometimes adding these in just the right way can really uh, boost that effect. Okay, so for this next one, I started getting into ones where I was trying to make more of a little bit of stubble. And actually, I'll have to start up here because part of the effect of this brush is getting that those kind of little spiky edges to the bottom. So keep in mind, if you were to draw this brush across, it's gonna look like this. You're gonna have heavier edges at one side, thinner edges at the other. So based upon the direction you pull, they're gonna point in different ways. So it's good to get used to that. And so I, I wanted this one to look a little bit more like stylized uh, stubble. So I'll try to thin it out at the top, make it more dense at the bottom. Uh, again, I think this is a, a little bit more of a stylized texture, but it can be effective. So try that one out. And then these next two are just variations of the same thing. I was trying to get different densities uh, because one of the things I noticed with custom brushes is you're just not going to get one brush that, that does it all for you. You're a lot more likely to be able to combine a couple of these effects and get the kind of texture you're looking for. This can work really well for like grass and foliage effects, especially from a distance, uh, and also stippling for like, you know, beard hair, arm hair. You just have to play around with the way that you would, you know, layer it and use it. And also, you know, fur, things like that. But also keep in mind that any of these brushes, you can click, hold, and then pull. And sometimes just by spacing out the texture or condensing it down, you might be able to get the effect you're looking for. So stippling brushes are effective, good for backgrounds. I also tried to create a chrome-like texture to help people that seems to be a pretty common thing where people struggle to do chrome. Uh, so all it generally is when you see chrome is it's a reflection of the atmosphere or, or background, I should say, uh, maybe some of the atmosphere as well. So you're getting a shadow to the bottom and you're getting kind of uh, swirling marks to the top. Now I couldn't really effectively make a, a really good chrome brush, but it gets the process started. So I would take the spatter brush along with what I've started here, and I would blend that down this way more. Because what, again, what you're trying to do is create a sense of a gradient, a fade. And this rounded line is really the horizon line. Um, so that's that's what you're emulating and that's why you'll see people do reflections of people or a house or windows uh, any of the above any of that stuff will work but I would I would play around with some of the cross hatching brushes and stippling to add to this maybe take this thinner cross hatch brush Really, you probably want that to fade down, so probably rotate this. Again, play around with the size. Sometimes just the tips of the, um, the particular brush looks kind of cool to run around the edge. So things like that. And then at the top part, I would grab just a regular brush. In this case, this angle tip brush that I created. And I would just play around with 
introducing more of these um, these swirls. So again, these are too repetitive for something that would be reflective or chrome-like. But if you take this brush a bit bigger, something like this, and just practice swirling this in and out and creating your own variation to this. I mean, that's really what these brushes are made for anyways, to help you kind of visualize this stuff. Maybe do some of the uh, repetitive task for you but then you should always try to accentuate it and add to it can't really get the curve i want you know what and on something like that i generally leave this off but i would bump up the streamline so i want like a more fluid kind of feeling to this and i want to just focus on getting the heavy to the thin maybe one right through the middle let's try that so again, I would play around with this quite considerably, but it's that's the kind of look you're after, a bunch of swirling marks. Remember too, at the very edges, it's generally gonna condense down. Just think of it like a planet. You're gonna have land masses look bigger in the center of the planet, but as they get to the side, they're gonna squeeze in and condense down because we have to perceive that we can't see around the edge of that orb or spherical object, right? So same thing applies with this kind of stuff. You could really push these glares to be um, a bit tighter on the edges. Yeah, I don't know, I would just play around with this and, until I got what I was after. It's close, not exactly, I feel like the middle has too much open light. Something like that. And then also you can think about the, um, the glare up here as well. So you'll see a lot of people just kind of go even something like this. It's kind of a quick, effective way to establish a light source. I'd probably bring this brush down. You can also do the uh, the famous glare like that. But again, all that helps you to kind of perceive that this is a little more dimensional. You could also go back with the erase, and you could erase the edges. Because generally, you're going to get more light on the very edge of something that's uh, reflective and spherical. You could probably even render into this a little bit like this. Yeah, that almost feels a little distracting, but there's a way to do it where it'll look good. But again, I think there would be light all the way around the edge of this. Maybe heavier into the side. Yeah, I feel like that does look better. So let's try that over here as well. But again, hopefully that just gets the ideas going for you. Play around with those concepts and see what you can come up with. Um, you could even take one of the rendering brushes, I suppose, and go like this. Remember too, any of these brushes, if, if you're not liking the edges of them, just go past what it is you're trying to do. Hold for a second and then practice pulling and extending and look at the differences that you get with that texture. Sometimes that can really help and then go to edit shape and even play with the arc. So lots of ways to edit this and get these to go where you want. But a lot of it is just practicing, uh, you know, getting the effect where you want when you, you know, when you put the uh, stroke down. I don't like that one as much. Let me try. Yeah, it's a little distracting. That's not really what I was after. So let's go ahead and get that out of there. Let's do a quick uh, effect like this. Call it good. So there you go. Something that looks kind of chromey, and you can take that on and on. You could put like the reflection of a city right here. You'll see a lot of people do that. It looks pretty cool. Just remember, you will want to distort that. It'll probably look better like something like that. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so these next few are hatching brushes. And I, I don't know, I just really enjoy making these. I think they can be very effective. Uh, and they're not all going to fit exactly 
every scenario you know so you have to just experiment with them but what I can tell you is they're fun to use and when you get it just right the right kind of overlap you'll see that you know, you'll know it you'll just see it and, and you're only gonna get better like right there so these two overlaps at the bottom middle and to the right I really like those and now this is a heavier sense of uh, hatch and keep in mind too if you pull one way versus pull the other it changes the direction of you know the side going up or down so you play around with that also you can hold and again squeeze these together and get different unique effects uh, so that's where layers really help you so you will want to implement these with a layer and then you can maneuver them a lot better into place so I could go like this hold it squeeze it together and say okay that's the kind of transition I want from dark to light but that's not the right position I can rotate it I can resize it right there's all sorts of ways to, to utilize this uh, with that layer so just keep that in mind uh, again these heavier ones are going to be a little bit trickier to use you're going to want to play around with the size uh, again angle the screen as you go and look at the overlaps I really like this one as well so I added this um, bit of negative line to it and that that comes in really handy I've seen that create some pretty neat effects so sometimes you'll want to bring that right into the shapes and yeah, look at the hatching right there and you might need to erase parts back but uh, yeah it's it's can be pretty effective yeah see I like that and then I would take that why is that not oh it's not set to the clipping mask there we go and just like that it's blended into that area you don't got to worry about the erasing so that can be effective um, let's try one more so these ones are a little bit more like uh, for edge work so they're a bit heavier these spike ones and sharp tooth um, you got to use them more on the edge for most things I've tried to use them through the cross hatching like this and you might be able to get a use for it like that um, again play around with it but I, I tend to find that these work better for the very edges of something that I'm trying to render out so again hold it and then pull yeah something like that I feel like that works better for that type of instance and then this thin hatch this is one that I recommend if you don't if you haven't used a lot of these cross hatching brushes I recommend you kind of start here and just kind of go crazy with this thing because I feel like you can add it a lot more various ways and it works than the other ones the other ones require a little bit more practice but that's neat about this one it gives you a nicer kind of softer gradient that you can play around with and again just try the different sizes uh, move it around a lot and see what you come up with but try to really round out your forms with this and uh, yeah it's it's a pretty effective brush again like any of the other ones you can hold it squeeze it inward I um, almost feel like that's a bit too much there I'll leave it right about there so again those hatching brushes can be big time savers give those a try and then this tribal hatch is more of uh, what I would consider almost like a, um, a border effect I, I mean you could probably use it for a variety of things and just test it out but it essentially was supposed to be just a texture and I almost threw, threw it out but then I thought you know what as soon as I did this this little border like that I remember doing that uh, for comic panels so I thought this might be one that people would really like just for kind of tribal borders uh, again you might find use for it for different textures but I just I kind of feel like it has a neat little look to it so I ended up keeping that in there now these ones these two brushes probably could be used for a lot but these next two let me show you I'm gonna bring down the one circle because these really work kind of better as a, a you know the edge of a, a scene uh, but if you've ever drawn like techie kind of scenes and you wanted those those tubes that are just kind of dangling and hanging there this can be a really effective brush for that You're probably gonna want to use layers hold it and let it snap so you know kind of start off screen hold it let it clean up and then erase back in certain areas so you get that sense that one's in front of the other uh, you know obviously play around with the the various sizes you know try to get some that are really a lot thinner 
you could go thick to thin and make it look like they um, um, you know they're getting closer to the viewer and then also I felt like it needed at least two of these you know like if you overdo that too much and keep in mind you're gonna render over top of that of course but if you overdo the same effect too much it just becomes too repetitive so I made this one that's a little bit different Again, practice erasing back. I'm erasing back all the same ones, which you really don't have to. That's, you know, you want some that look like they go probably in front of areas and then behind other areas. So if I make this one look thicker on the one side, it almost looks like it comes from behind there and then it, it gets uh, closer to us. So then I could go back to these other ones, merge those together just to speed things up, and then I could erase these back. So just like that you've got some hang tubes and same rules apply with this brush you can pull it let it you know hold it and then stretch it or condense it down so if you wanted a more solid effect you'd squeeze it together uh, but if you want to separate these for whatever reason you could do that and they're they're all shaded so it has kind of a cool look to it so there's that and so with these rings kind of a similar thing I was really trying to make um, um, chain mail which you could still pull that off by you know overlapping it and using layers but also uh, it's good for like jewelry and same idea you can pull it and do kind of this neat kaleidoscope looking thing um, and again that's shaded as well so you've got some a little bit of little little bit of shadowing there so that should come in handy so for these next ones let me create another uh, circle here to show you these Okay, so for this one, it's a scale brush, and what's kind of neat about this one is it it's kind of infinite. So as long as you don't change the brush size, you could make as many scales as you need just going across the canvas and brushing along. Okay, now if you stop and pick up, it doesn't really matter. You can continue back over, but just keep in mind that that's something you got to, you know, be aware of that you could miss a spot. So if you're, you're hitting heavy in one area and then lighter in another, and then you change the brush size, brush size, you have to start over. So let me show you what I mean there. So say you're going like this and you go a little bit lighter and you don't realize it and you miss an area, you've kind of went through and adjusted things, but now you've changed your brush size, you're gonna get bigger scales that aren't gonna line up. So that's really the only way you can mess that up. Other than that, just make sure that you set it to the size you want brush through consistently and there you go tons of scales all you know it's a uh, seamless pattern now by itself it's gonna look a bit silly so what you have to do there is use something like liquify and just kind of move these around you know you could even uh, what is that one word expand you could ex expand the middle out like that and see how quite uh, immediately you get something that looks way more dimensional and spherical and then you would render with this so again this is just meant to give you kind of that starting point and then you have to work from it uh, from there and add you know some of your cross hatching brushes so you come here to do this and start hatching the bottom of it and getting it to look even more rounded but a lot of this is just going to look better when you add you know your freehand effects to it Okay, so there's that. So I think that'll come in handy for people that like to do a lot of the monster stuff and, you know, even Captain America's suit, right? That's kind of the similar scales that I was thinking there. Now the next one is along the same line, the next few, uh, but they are going to be something that's a bit more rectangular. So let me set that up. Okay, so for this one, it's infinite bricks. So wherever you brush, you're going to get this nice brick pattern. Now this one's more basic. I didn't add a whole lot of texture. There's just a little bit of uh, separation of the bricks and mortar joints. Uh, but again, it's tileable, repeatable, as many as you need, whatever size you need. There's that. These are going to look better as you distort them, obviously. So, you know, you don't want just a flat brick wall. So you're going to uh, distort these and create a sense of perspective. So generally, I will lay out perspective grids first. And then I will uh, distort these into place. And then obviously you're going to render over top of this. 
These, this is a good place to use like your spatter brushes, different cross hatching. Uh, I like to do effects where I darken in some of the bricks uh, as a shape. So I might go like this. And then I'll fill in everything here and I'll leave the mortar joints white. That's a quick effect. So again, just keep in mind this is a pattern to kind of get you rolling. So let me go back here and same thing where the next one is bricks as well, but these ones are textured. Okay, so obviously going a lot bigger there. And, you know, this is going to, some people are going to like this, some people aren't. I mean, I don't know that you want that much texture in there. I do for some of the designs I like to do. But again, tileable, and you can just brush in as many as you need, whatever size you want, and then distort them into place. And then maybe practice erasing some of that texture back, uh, creating some of that, uh, I don't know if it's stucco, but there's always those shapes that you see on, on top of bricks. Uh, but again, this should help you get some quick bricks and uh, you know, move right along the project. So next one, I'm gonna add another one here. And so in a similar instance, we've got chain link fencing. This one was actually really hard to make. I don't know why, but it was, but I was able to get it after Bunch of trial and error, but there you go, chain link fencing. Now it doesn't give you the tops or the side poles, you gotta do all that on your own, but it does give you a nice uh, effect of chain link fencing. Again, this is gonna look better with distortions. So as you brush all this in, and you get it the size you want, make sure that you fill all this in. So you get that in there like that. Probably missed a few spots and then you distort that into place. So uh, let's see if I distorted just this, would that work? So free form, distort it into place, get your sense of perspective going. But yeah, it's just gonna save you time. Now, the one thing to keep in mind with this as well is that I, to get the pattern right, I did have to squeeze it in. So you might wanna start with widen them out to what they really are. They're usually a little bit more squared off than what I have them, so just keep that in mind. But again, hopefully that'll save you some time and get you some quick uh, chain link fencing. So the next one is just regular old chains. So these ones are just you know regular chains and you can't really overlap them because they, they need to be colored. Uh, all of these are translucent in the back. The only bad thing about this one that I noticed is the more you rotate it, the more they go off tilt. I couldn't really get that figured out. If I do figure it out, I'll update the set. Uh, but you can place them like this, and then you can distort them into place with layers and liquefy and different things like that, simply selecting them and, and shifting them. But either way, it still gives you the pattern to work with. All right, and the final two are just uh, kind of ones I've been using, or I'll explain them real quick, just basically a good inking brush that gives you a nice uh, kind of hooked line that I like to see. Let's see how it does that. Let me make that larger for you. So if you were to press down and just pull, you get that nice little hook at the beginning of it. And that can be great for cross hatching effects. Uh, I like it for just the art in general. It tends to make things look more interesting as I'm going around inking the characters and stuff like that. So there's that. And then the darker pencil, I just made sure there's some texture there, but it's very responsive. Uh, I also didn't want anything that shifted as I tilted the pencil. So if I tilt the pencil, I get the same line. Now I know a lot of people prefer the opposite to that, but for me, I want the responsiveness and I don't want the um, foggy lines that you get when it sometimes does that. So uh, just play around with the opacity, see what you like. You can make this really dark if you want. I generally start lighter, do a lot of my sketching, and darken it up as I go. So there you have it. That's uh, that's basically the brush set. Uh, let me fill in the middle and call this good. Uh, probably the, the bricks. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and it's explained how you could utilize these. There's so many applications for this and I'll be adding to the set. I really appreciate everybody supporting the brushes that I've created. I've been making these for quite some time and uh, yeah, they always seem to spark new ideas. So I'll make sure to make some more very soon. Thanks very much for watching. Good luck with the art and bye for now.